Hi, everyone. I'm Ayla. I'm Beth Ann. And this is Let's Talk BL, a boys love podcast. What's up? What's up? I'm so excited. We, we're doing this episode 2.1. We got this. How yeah. are you feeling? Good. We're professional now. This is this is all I do. <laughs> it's like how in BLs, every time they ask them, they're like, are you guys used to kissing each other yet? They're like, yeah, we do it so much. It's like not even a big deal. We don't even think about it. <laughs> Me. Oh, so good. I Me love but it. podcasts. Yes. <laughs> Who would have thought we'd be doing a podcast? You know, I always heard I have a face for radio. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> no way. <laughs> Whatever. So, so what are we talking about today? What What do you need to hear my thoughts and opinions on? Yes, today? I'm so excited to be talking about this today. So we're going to talk about the different countries' BLs, which I feel like is going to be so fun because I have all of the information and Ayla has very limited. I have no information. She won't won't watch other countries. That's not true. That's not true. That is a lie. I am being slandered on the (laughs) internet. (laughs) I will sue you. I'm an equal opportunity watcher. And so I watch anything and everything that I can if it's being talked about on the internet. Yeah. Whereas Ayla is doing her best to just like get through I'm just trying to get through, man. I'm new. Help me. I'm new. (laughs) Okay. So the countries that I have watched BLs from are, of course, Thailand, uh, Korea, South Korea, Taiwan. I've only watched one Japanese BL, and I have not watched a Chinese BL. But the Chinese are controversial because... They like have shut. They will shut down production if they. What's find interesting out. about what you're saying right now is that <laughs> I feel like because you just said, you know, you just pretty much watch anything people are talking about, yeah. which fair. Uh, that's a fair perspective. I feel like even before you had got me into BLs, right? Even before you trapped me with yeah. with history trapped. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, <laughs> um, even before that happened, I like saw on Twitter and like full disclosure, my Twitter is entirely K-pop because that's where I get a lot of my K-pop news. So I keep right. my feed very well, you know, curated <laughs> so that I don't miss anything. Even then, I feel like I was seeing people talk about the Untamed, which is Chinese, Mm. like crazy. So I think we can get into that. But in terms of what I've seen, less than you still. um, Again, obviously, Thai, I have a deep love for all of my Thai boys. So good. Um, And I love that each country is so distinctly different. Yeah, I have only watched one South Korean BL, although it kind of surprises me that that's where I'm – it does surprise me and doesn't surprise me that that's where I'm at because I love K-dramas so much along with the rest of the world that right. it seems like a natural step for me to, like, go into the the Korean BLs. Right. But I think just because there's so many Thai series out there and they just, like, come at you like wildfire and right. then there's, like, boys and you want to know who that boy is and you want to know what's going on here so you watch the series so that you can yeah. figure it out so I think maybe that's why because I did really enjoy the one that I watched um yeah actually me, I think it was beautiful and then I have also I am super into the Taiwanese BLs like I I think they have the best storytelling of any right. of the countries um except for until we meet again because that's true masterpiece and it's Thai (laughs) but I have not watched a Japanese one I have not watched a Chinese one um and I know that there are some Vietnamese BLs I have not ventured into that and Filipino ones too they I I have watched a Filipino BL because it I think popped up on my on my YouTube and that's mm. the other that's the other way I pretty much come across BLs is how accessible they are. So at this point I've probably watched every BL that's on Vicky <laughs> because yeah, yeah that's fair. where uh, that's where I was consuming most of my 
uh, Asian entertainment content. And so if it wasn't on Vicky, I would go to YouTube. And then of course, when I got more into BL, I started, I would like download all the apps. So I have like Line TV, Line, Line TV and Weed TV and like all those mm. different ones. And so I think it's really interesting to talk about the different countries because I, I would say I'm as the, the newbie, um, I am most well-versed in the differences and the similarities between the Thai and the Taiwanese BLs yeah. because I actually, I feel like this is not a normal way to get into BLs, but my first BL, we talked about this in the intro, was actually History Tamed or right. Trapped, History Trapped. Yeah. Um, and I feel like it's not all that super common if you're like trying to get into BLs, honestly, what I had <laughs> I had mentioned something about golf to someone and like the very first thing that I get anytime people hear that like oh Ailey, you're watching the BLs now <laughs> um is have I watched Tharn type and so I oh, feel like yeah. that's a really common I think that's like the starter for most people nowadays obviously I don't know I am new but I think the starter for most people nowadays is the the Thai BL. So I feel like it's right. kind of unconventional that I started with Taiwanese, but maybe not. Yeah, I think because when I was showing you BLs, I wanted to I wanted to hook you. Yeah, you're trying to trap me. I get it. <laughs> Based on like the quality of the content. Because I will say with Thai BLs, because Tharn Type was my first-ish one that you it's have so to, popular. It like it's it really makes popular. sense. It has a big following. There's a lot of fan made content. And so I, you have to look past like a lot of the tropes and a lot of the things that Thai BLs have. And so getting into BLs, I was like, let me show her one that's like really quality, really like a developed. Thing. Because the storyline is important to me. As as right. a viewer, I right. am really, really big on the storyline. Yeah. I'm a storyteller, like, professionally which in my, like, why, day-to-day life. So. Which is why you should watch more of the South Korean ones, too. I really love the South Korean ones because they turn them into movies a lot of times because they're so short. And they're available on Netflix as well as Vicky. And so that's why I'm like, I, you need to watch more Korean ones because they are these well-developed storylines. They have a nice like beginning, middle and end. They're very, I actually am. I'm very neat. interested to watch more South Korean ones because the one that I did watch is just it. Like it felt Korean to me coming right, from right. a place where like, yeah. honestly, I watch a lot of K dramas. I, right. my Asian media consumption started with Korean media. It and started it with idol in it. Like it started with K-pop idol. Right. So like my Asian media consumption started with K-pop started with K dramas. Right. Actually, I, I liked K dramas before I liked K-pop, mm. which is part of the reason it took me so long to get into K-pop is because I ha- had like a weird self doubt moment where I was like, I can't be into the K dramas and the K pop. Like, right, right, right. that's too much. Um, I was wrong. It tur- you can be in anything you want to be into. Um, but so that, like, I feel like I understand I am not Korean. <laughs> I will never be Korean. Um, right. But I feel like because I just for so many years have consumed Korean media as a fan, um, mm-hmm. you know, respectfully that I feel like I get it. It makes sense to me. Um, I, like I visited Korea. I right. learn am slash learning to speak Korean. Like it, I, you know, I just feel like I get it. And so that's like the one that I did watch. It felt very Korean to me. I was like, Oh, this is a K drama, but just instead of like a girl and a boy, it's like two boys. Yeah. I was like, I, I get this. I under, and part of the reason. So I was, so the one that I watched was color rush. Um, <laughs> and, I think the thing that struck me so K-drama-ish about Mm -hmm. it was the fact that it's, like, dangerous, (laughs) which is a very common thing in K-dramas, right? Like, someone's always getting kidnapped. Someone's, like, getting in a car accident. Like, something is putting you in, like, physical danger in K-dramas. Right, right, right. right, right. And so, I like, in Color Rush, the physical danger is, like, by the way, he might murder you. (laughs) 
<laughs> so uh, like I was like okay this is like a very K drama right yeah. like it, it just it reminded me so much of things like to name like a very recent K drama like Itaewon class where it's like by the way he might kidnap you and keep you in a, like right. an industrial park until Park So Jun comes for you like <laughs> it's it was very much like that and then right. like his mom did get murdered in this show I guess they never really tell you if she was murdered or not. Yeah, or if it was just like an accident. They've confirmed a season two. So I think they're going to, because potentially she does come back because his like, right, that's what it, it's like a that mystery. And that's with. another, yeah. that's another thing about it. That's very K drama to me. So I've only watched one. I cannot say this is something that's true across all South Korean BLs, but the South, what I liked about it is that like, yeah, I love K dramas. So right. of course I liked it. Yeah. They're so good. Uh, Where Your Eyes Linger was one of my first K-dramas, which I love the lead actors in that. One of the lead actors has become pretty popular in South Korea and has, like, shown up. He showed up in uh, a drama that I just finished uh, called Oh My Lady Lord. He, like, played an assistant to somebody, and he's shown up a few different places. He actually just showed up in another BL with another lead, like two of the other lead actors from two of the other BLs. So I, Korea is really amping up on their like BL content. And so I but, think that's something that happens slowly because yeah, I, like, I, again, as a K-drama fan, I, I've noticed that slowly there are more and more LGBTQ, really LGBT, L, really LGB. Yeah, pretty much yeah. relationships. Like yeah. they're they're not quite there with the whole uh with everyone. Um, but right. like for example, Love with Flaws, there's a, like a pretty right. prominent right. gay storyline that was right. rad. Like it was really well developed. They did a good job with it, I thought. Very good. Um so yeah, it's cool that they're continuing, which is I think and and it feels very K drama, which I love. And which they is just put a BL storyline in the new Netflix drama, um Door to Heaven. Something happened. And and I feel like that's kind of it's different. Um and it's refreshing to watch or not necessarily refreshing, but it's just different. It's a different yeah. experience compared to if we hop over to talking about kind of like the overall themes in Thai BLs, there are a lot of very specific tropes. And I think right. it's because there's just so much, like so many novels, like and right. we, for what the industry is for this these stories that they're telling most of it is centered fr in thailand and from thai and comes from thailand right. and so i think that there's just even though it's still a very very new industry there's just a lot of it and so there are really really well developed tropes that like you recognize in every single thai right. or at least i've started to recognize right like similarly to the cre in like in the k dramas that came over in the Korean BL I watched is that like right. everyone's in physical danger. There are tropes like that in Thai BLs that yeah. Thai BL is a completely different experience. One of those things that one of my favorite is sort of like so crazy unique to Thai BLs are the sound effects. It's wild. It took me a second to like stay in it take it seriously sound effects i will say there was this the the swallowing sound effect in lovely rider i like could not ever because i don't like asmr so like i just was like y'all slow down yeah the sound effects watch. are a lot it almost takes you out of it and i like them now i think they're sort of like fun and quirky and i kind yeah. of just tune them out now it's just a part yeah. of the watching you experience that's why i introduced you to a taiwanese bl first just so that you kind of had a less like kitschy it experience. makes it in the beginning in the beginning the sound effects make thai bls sort of feel like, like you can't joke, take it seriously. Yes, like a yeah. joke. Yeah. And I mean, let's talk BL. We're all about having fun and it is fun. This is media that is consumed right. for us to enjoy. Right. But it's almost to the point where it's like, uh, I feel weird. Like, are we making fun of the story? Like, mm -hmm. but I don't think that's it now that I'm right. no. deeper, deeper in. Yeah, I definitely think the Thai BL industry has had a good education over the past 
couple of years. I mean, I've only been watching like a year's worth of content, right. but from what I've seen, especially like from the Tharn type hype that, and now that there's a big international following, they have had a lot of conversations about, okay, this isn't okay. We need to address these these types of situations and these tropes because again we are coming at it from like a u.s standpoint where like we like to claim that we're more woke and you and i of course are more educated and coming at this from like okay that's not okay this isn't right so we can kind of see it through a, a an entertainment lens but we also recognize that like there are like younger people that are watching this around the world that like shouldn't be exposed to like a boy trying to kiss another boy while they're asleep or, you know, like all those. Kinds that of Okay. Things. That's a great <laughs> example of like a, a Thai BL trope, the night caressing. I, I cannot get behind that. That was my number one beef bad. with everything is right. just like night caressing. I, it, if it's so I don't understand it. I, I don't know. Uh, but I, <laughs> I I think your point of, you know, they've had an education. I, because I've been just sort of like slamming through these lately, yeah. I, I've definitely and it, and seen it. Because I will say, yeah, so I've definitely seen that in the Thai ones. And I do appreciate that some of the, the pr- production companies are trying. Because, for right. example, I just finished Lovely Rider. And there's a scene in Lovely Rider where um, the the main character goes home and he's, spoiler alert, if you haven't watched Lovely Rider, this is a spoiler, we'll timestamp it. Um, so there's a scene where Gene, the main character, goes home and he's written this BL novel and it's getting turned into a series, right? And he's talking to his family about it and his brother asks him, he's like, oh, what's the, the um, female protagonist like in your story? And he stops and he explains, he's like, it's not a female protagonist. Mm -hmm. It's right. Because that is something that I noticed really early on in the tie BLs was that they would always refer to one of the guys in the relationship as the wife or the female. Mm -hmm. And it's like, "Mm, that's not okay. That's not right. And so I thought it was cool that lovely writer took the time to like purposely place a scene that explained like, okay, well actually like, and did it in a constructive way. Like his brother clearly didn't mean harm by it. He wasn't, you know, like didn't get hurt by it because right. he, his character is also gay. You like, don't um, know what you don't know. Right. And so he just explains it. He's like, well, actually it's not called a female protagonist, it, you know, and this is a situation. And then they move on. They continue having like a separate conversation. So yeah. I do think it's cool that like, because I have seen that happen like back to back, I was like, oh, okay. Like we're getting there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the other country that, I have watched one Japanese one that I like was so excited to see. I think I I, like, I'm a big trailer person. So like I'll go on YouTube and just like watch trailers on like repeat. And so uh, love, I think it's called love life on the line. It's also on Vicky and they, that was such a good drama. It was so good. Uh, And so cherry magic is another Japanese one that I, I'm looking forward to watching at some point. But is again, there anything that you noticed that sort of made them? Because I, I watch Japanese TV shows. Um, right. And so I'm curious to hear if there's anything. Because I haven't watched Japanese BL. Is there anything that's like sets it apart, right? Because we talked about like in the Thai BLs, you got those sound effects. You've got some other tropes. Right. In the South Korean ones, there's, it feels very like K-drama-esque. Is there anything that changes the watching experience for a Japanese BL? I I would say I guess it fits in with like what Japanese entertainment is like. It was a lot like darker, like the tone. Mm-hmm. Not that it was like ominous, but it was just like a darker, more like gritty, I guess you would say. Interesting. Um drama there I think that the Japanese are probably like willing to take more risks because they are I would say more, there's a lot more, uh, I don't even know how to say this. Uh, There's probably. Well, I mean, the the manga, the yaoi, right? Like that all. It all started. It started there. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're the originators. Yeah. So 
Yeah. But again, like I'm consuming content based on how accessible it is. And so I didn't see Cherry Magic anywhere that like was easy to access legally. And so I'm not necessarily going to watch it as easily. Whereas like a a lot of the Thai ones are on YouTube and a lot of the Korean ones are on. Well, and so speaking of like accessibility, I I think that the Taiwanese are for the most part actually the most accessible for Mm -hmm. somebody who's just getting into BLs because like you said, Vicky. So if you're consuming a lot of Asian media already or even a little bit of Asian media, you probably have Vicky and you probably know what it is and you know how to use it. Right. And so I, you know, I, I, all of the Taiwanese ones that I have watched except for We Best Love we're on Vicky. And so I just right, feel like it's right. it's a good, easy yeah. accessibility. And the Taiwanese ones have their own feel too, which I think is so interesting right. and cool. And I like on a personal level, my favorite storytelling comes out of the Taiwanese ones. A yeah. few exceptions to that rule. But in general, I know if I'm turning on a Taiwanese BL, I'm going to like the development of the story. I, yeah. Here's what it is the pacing of the stories is perfect, which is a problem right. in some, in particularly Thai BLs. Right. The pacing is sometimes feels off, but the pacing right. in Taiwanese BLs, is, I mean, perfect. Like these filmmakers are like, the, are these script writers? Because I wonder yeah. if they're relying on, on the audience of Thai BLs to have read the, the mm, book. That's the a novel. good question. Yeah. Because I'm watching a Thai BL right now where there just feels like a ton of holes in the plot because it's based on a fanfic. And so I'm well, wondering if that's like that's where – because you you sent me information from Tharn Type where it was like here's someone who sat down and explained all of the content that was left out of yeah. the show that you get from the book. And Which I, was super interesting. And – yeah, I I think you're probably right about that in terms of the pacing for the Thai BLs because I noticed that happened in End of Love and Love Mechanics, back on my war agenda as per <laughs> usual. Um, it all comes back to war. Oh. Uh, but there's like a six-month time jump that they don't actually explain has happened. Right. Um, but it's very clearly defined evidently in the novel. And mm. I found this out through another fan on Discord, quite frankly. Apparently, there's a lot more to Mark's character in the novel than you see. He's like less of a victim. In Mark is very victimized in right. love mechanics uh, in a lot of ways. But apparently he's there there's like more to it that you get from the novel so yeah i think you're probably right about that in terms of pacing and i think that just from what i have seen from the out of series content on the taiwanese ones the behind the scenes stuff is there is a lot of emphasis placed on are we telling the story right is the pacing right like literally moving through the scenes from like step by step right right And as a story, like, I appreciate good storytelling that I would say in terms of story and pacing, I love the experience of watching a Taiwanese BL. Yeah. Yeah, they just have, like, kind of every box checked when it comes to good content. And also, they are putting a lot more Taiwans on Netflix. I know Sodas is on Netflix. Sodas is on Netflix. Um. Oh gosh, Hormones is on Netflix. I keep meaning to watch that one. Uh, I guess some of the older ones, I have written into Netflix and told them they need to put Itse on there because Itse should be a national treasure to Thailand and they need to get it together. Um, um, yeah, I think the yeah. other point to the Taiwanese ones that I think is just, is really good or that I appreciate is they always throw in like a really good action scene. <laughs> Um, even yeah like even something like we best love that's a little bit more like emotion filled right. i would say yeah. there's yeah. a good action scene they always throw in a good action scene that it's kind of like nice to break up the the feels especially right. in something like we best love right. um and like there's even an action scene in make our days count which is emotionally traumatizing and i just don't we can't even we're not going to talk about it specifically. Yeah. Yeah. But so like they throw in a good action scene, which is like fun and it breaks it up. And it's like an extra element that truly you don't 
see in right. other countries BLs. It's right. like a true action scene. Sometimes you get fist fights and things like that in the Thai BLs, but yeah. not like a like there's always like a car chase or like a legitimate like yeah. gang fight. Like there's always like a like an action scene. Yeah. The Taiwanese just like have it right. I yeah. I really like the Taiwanese every Taiwanese BL that I've watched, I that that that's probably the content that I rewatch the most too. Like I because I am consuming so much new media that like I don't rewatch a lot of things. And I would say like Taiwanese is what I rewatch the most. I I pretty much only rewatch Love Mechanics, and that is purely <laughs> from the purely from a Yin War standpoint. Like if I get to watch Yin War, honestly, I should change it up and my rewatch should just be WXY, like the season yeah. of WXY. WXY is not a BL, but it will get me that Yin War. Especially, here's the other thing. I really like to rewatch Love Mechanics after I've watched something that's really emotional that has traumatized me. Like Make Our Days Count, for example. I I was like, I never want to watch another BL again after Make Our Days Count. It was so... I rewatch Make Our Days Count pretty often, except for episode 12. I have only rewatched episode It ends in episode made, 11. When it's I over. made you watch it, I was like, okay, I'm going to rewatch this episode with dude, her. And was like, I thought I was going to... Dude, I thought so I was going to die. I like I almost oh, died up there, okay, it's to so to good. steal words from We This Love. But um the reason I we we watched Love Mechanics so much is it's kind of silly and of love in general. It, it, it there are some problematic bits to it that right. I like can't agree with or yeah. get on board with, but I love every single boy that's in that's in End of Love in general, yeah. um and especially Love Mechanics like every single one of them like thailand (laughs) shout out rookie thailand and wabi sabi like you take rookie thailand and wabi sabi and put them together and it's like a powerhouse so good and i love every single one of those boys and also it's like kind of silly it's not super emotion filled aside from the fact that you want to just like punch v's character in the face um but it's like it's it's a little bit more lighthearted. and so i think that's why i re i'm not re-watching the taiwanese stuff i'm re-watching love mechanics just love mechanics just love yeah. mechanics and it's purely because i'm on that war agenda 100 so uh speaking of out of show content when you were talking about wxy i will say it's interesting to see how the different countries promote these uh shows because in korea there's not a lot of extra out of show content other than like a, th- a few things on youtube and stuff that vicky typically does anyways um, and then a few of the actors do have like their own vlogs that they've started. That's like a huge thing where a lot of these actors yeah. have started YouTube channels. Um, the Taiwanese probably have some of the best, the best. variety show appearances. Oh God, I would say, the like, variety shows. If you watch a Taiwanese BL, please go watch literally every show that they appear on because it's so every it's just single variety so show. So good and so, so funny. And the and hosts are always amazing. They're so engaging. You never get like a yeah. dud host. Right. Yeah. I never feel like they are asking the same questions over and over. Like they, they, I will say the interesting part about watching just Asian content in general is how there's like no line when it comes to the questions they ask. The games are also wild on the top. If, if you are one of those amazing. people that like, watching like for if you're a k-pop fan and you like watching like your boys play mafia or something right oh my god the taiwanese out of series content for you like yeah the games are out of control so good and i will say with thai stuff the studios have been doing a lot of extra content just because filming i think has been hard during covid so they have been doing these, these fun little side things uh i know yeah, everyone's got like a youtube series yeah. now which is fun um it's yeah fun. It's super fun because really like you want to see these people just like hanging out and doing just common things uh one of my favorite extra content was from lovely writer where cal and up did like a little getaway and it is like the most precious thing because like again these boys like you can tell they're just friends and like good friends who trust each other and care about each other. And like, there's no awkwardness, which I think is like 
the biggest part of just these two boys who probably met each other like a year ago, which is why, which is why I love Mew Golf, right? Like from day one, Mew, uh, Golf was like, I trust you. I think we're going to be great together. There's no weirdness. And so I just think that's a, an aspect of Golf's personality that just cracks me up. And I love about him. I feel so like sweet. he would trust a rock if, if like, I don't know. I love Golf so much. I do um, too. In terms of promotion, I think where Thailand is different, like markedly different from the other countries in terms of promotion are the fan meetings. I have to say oh, as, as God. an until we meet again enthusiast, Fan the until we meet again fan meeting uh, here's the thing i never go and search out these fan meeting content it just i let it come to me <laughs> um it, and i mean you i don't even know to see fluke in a full like the metallic and honestly actually the one with the best outfit is earth from that fan meeting it, like his little oh, outfit with the with the metallic the hot top. pants. Okay, he it. literally Earth. Okay, Earth's outfit from this fan meeting was so good. metallic hot pants so good. and a metallic like long like vest situation yeah. with like an un, like a frilly neck undershirt. It's no one does it like Earth. Glorious. It truly is glorious. And this they. They have this like cast ensemble performance. It's always music based, which I think is part of the reason that I love the fan meeting so much is music so is big for me. Yeah. If I can get my idols to both act and sing, I'm in. You got yeah. me. Yeah. And so I think the fan meetings are a really unique part of like yeah. high promotion for these because it's a production. It's not right. just a fan meeting, right? right? It's not, we're not talking about like, a, like a K-pop fan meeting where, you know, you're in an, you're in an auditorium and right. there are seats and you're sitting there and you kind of, no, no, no. Like it is a production yeah. on stage that they have practiced for and there's lighting and there's outfits and it's like a thing. Right, um, right. And I love it. I'm into it. It's so good, which is why it's kind of a bummer that like COVID is preventing them releasing a bunch of these shows because they do want to have a lot of these like fan interactions. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, hopefully COVID finishes up soon and we can get more. Get that vaccine roll out. Um. Boys in hot <laughs> pants and metallic outfits singing and dancing to I'm our so hearts. so here for content. it. It's so good. Okay, is there anything else that we want to talk about in relation to the different countries? I think I think just understanding – I like talking about how it's a different viewing experience because 100%. I think one thing that is a misconception when, like, people that I know sort of like in real life um, <laughs> find out that I'm like, this is the media I'm consuming right now, yeah. is that it's sort of, like, all the same and literally the only – it's, like – in their brains, they're like, oh, it's some sort of fetishization. Like, you just want to watch right. boys kiss each other. Right. And so just, like, the fact that, like, actually it's not and they're not even all the same. Right. <laughs> like, across the different countries um, is what I like about it. So I, I really like talking about the differences between the countries and the shows. Yeah, it is interesting to think about each country – and what they each they're also different and that's why i have found it fun to kind of consume like right now i'm watching like a taiwanese one and i watch a thai one and kind of all the different ones and they don't really like overlap or intersect at all which mm -hmm. has been a lot of fun awesome well I think that's all that we have to say. Um, it's actually probably not all that we have to say, but it's probably all we should subject the internet to. <laughs> There's much more talking to be had. There's much more to be had. Um, just a, a wrap up disclosure. Um, again, any spoilers, we will timestamp them and definitely tune in to series Sundays because the next series Sundays coming up is lovely writer. We talked about that a lot on this episode. So if you're into lovely writer and want to hear about solely lovely writer, um, we'll see you on Sunday. Yeah.